Hey what's up guys and welcome back to my channel and another video on Gran Turismo 7. We have Thursday again which means we have a new lap time challenge or as far as I heard there is two new ones. So let's get into the game and check out the details. So as mentioned we have two new challenges. One of which is due to the World Series happening in Prague soon. So we have the Red Bull Ring in Group 3. And the other one is on Trail Mountain Circuit in reverse layout in the Roadster Shop Rampage vehicle. But let's just focus on Red Bull Ring first. And we have to choose from 12 different vehicles out of Group 3. And it seems a lot of people go for the Ferrari, so let's also follow them and go for this one. And one thing I have just noticed is we have a wet track, or at least damp. Let's check for the tires. Yeah, we have to use intermediate, so... This could be interesting, and the current time to beat is a 139.4. So let's get into it and try out how it works. And starting your lap, you need to make sure you forget everything you know about the dry line. You need to use a wet line. So for the first brake marker, which is the 150 meter board, go to the left hand side of the curb into the wet and brake hard in a straight line. This is important. Go down to second gear shortly, early up to third, aim for the apex, let the car coast, slight but sensitive accelerator pedal input, and once you straighten up, full power. Now accelerate through and make sure you stay in the wet, so don't go to the dry line. Keep the car in the middle of the track in the wet and then you want to break around 120 meters. So you go from the wet line to the very left hand side of the track to have a good position into the corner. Go down to first gear, try to keep the car stable, let it rotate very slowly up to second and once you have a straight line again more or less, go full to the power and accelerate through. Again, let the car go into the wet, stay on the right hand side of the track and for the next corner it's the same. Break from the wet part to the left hand side of the corner to get a good position into the corner and at the left hand side of the track you go a little bit wide into the corner because there is the wet part again. You will have more grip in this one. So let the car rotate in second gear and again once you straightened up, go to the power fully and accelerate in the wet line. Accelerate up to 4th gear, position the car to the right hand side into the wet and the next brake marker is around 70 meters. Brake hard but short and down to 3rd and for some rotation you may then use 2nd gear as well. Then early up to 3rd again and let the car coast through the corner with some sensitive power input. Once you get more or less straight again you can lose a lot of this curb and at the end of this one where the white line crosses the straight line, brake hard again, go wide again into the wet down to 3rd gear Again, let the car coast through the corner and once you notice you're straightening up, go fully to the power again and go straight to the wet part of the track on the left hand side. Accelerate through in fourth gear, really rev this gear out up to fifth and your next brake marker is shortly after the 100 board on the left. Brake hard in a straight line again and go down to third gear. Let the car go a little bit wide because this is again the wet part of the track. Let the car coast and once you straighten up, short power input before braking early for the last corner. Let the car again coast into this one before going sensitively to the power because this one I lost a lot of laps because I went on the power too early. As you can see here I have some instability but I could manage to get it and thereby get a goal time at a 138.8. And as usual let's review the lap once more from Chase Cam. So starting your lap again make sure you go to the wet line of the track. So position the car to the left and then for the braking at the 150 meter board use the wet curb on the left hand side. Down to second gear shortly, then up to third, let the car coast through the corner and once you notice you're straight, go fully to the power again in third gear. Now accelerate all the way through and try to keep the car in the wet part of the track again. So if you're in the middle of the track, that's fine. And your next brake marker is around 120 meters and then get the car over to the left hand side of the track to get a good corner entry, try to keep it narrow to the inside curb, up to second and then fully to the power again once you straighten up. Accelerate in the wet part again because it has more grip, go up to fifth gear and then from the right hand side from the wet part of the track, brake to the left hand side again crossing the dry line and then go a little bit wide into the wet again because you will again have more grip. In second gear once you straighten up go fully to the power again, take a wide entry into this corner up to fourth gear and then into the wet again Breaking around 70 meters, down to third and second for some rotation, up to third again, being sensitive on the accelerator pedal, use a lot of the curb on the right hand side because it's the wet part again, 
At the end of the curb, brake down to third gear, let the car coast through the corner, and once you straightened up again, go back to the power, going straight over to the left-hand side of the track, which is wet again, accelerating fourth gear, revving it out up to fifth, and then at the 100 meter board, brake in a straight line, go wide again into the wet area in third gear, let the car coast fully back to the power shortly, and then braking early for the last corner, Again, let the car coast and then in a sensitive way go to the power, make your way to the finish line and hopefully have a gold time to get 2 million credits. And that's it! One lap in Group 3 machinery on Red Bull Ring in the wet. Basically, forget everything you know about the ideal line in the dry. You have to use the wet line using the wet tires. I used the intermediates, I didn't go for the wet ones, but if you're not comfortable on the intermediates, maybe it's worth a try. And then what's most important, be sensitive on the accelerator pedal, the brake pedal, and of course the steering. Hard acceleration only if the steering is straight. And then the car should be more or less controllable. But let me know in the comments how you handled this one. As usual, if this guide helped you out, I'd be happy if you leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I will as well upload another video for the other lap time challenge. And don't forget the video I uploaded last week for the challenge on the Eiger Nordwand. And then I say thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.